Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. We're still letting a few people in. Hello. Good morning, Sam. Hi, Bob, how are you? My well, so good. Good. Okay, welcome everyone to our monthly membership meeting. Uh, we are thrilled that you are here with us. And uh, this is a, um, a meeting we hold every month just to let you know what we're doing, what we're up to, and ways you can engage with the chapter. And I am now gonna hand it over to Amelia. Hi everyone, my name is Amelia um, and I'm a staff member at the chapter. I'm sure you've seen me before if you've come to one of these programs or these meetings prior and I'm glad that uh, we have you all meeting with us today. Uh, and I actually am gonna start off with some awesome news uh, for the chapter in which um, last year in 2020, we increased our membership. This was the first time that there was a positive increase in membership um, since 2015. In 2015, uh, there was the introduction of CEs. So we saw a big jump in 2015 because of those CEs. Um, but this was the first time we've been able to increase since then. Uh, and we think that it's really because we've uh, increased the amount of initiatives, uh, CE programming and ways for social workers to engage with one another and engage with the chapter during that time. Um, for your example, just the fact that you all came to this meeting this afternoon uh, is indicative of um, people who are really wanting to get, get engaged and invest in their chapter. So I wanna thank you for joining us um, and for helping us to create this momentum. And we're gonna share a few things that um, have been happening, that have been developed, uh, that we hope to continue uh, that upward momentum. So we have introduced something called special interest groups recently. Uh, the chapter, as you know, has a board of directors. Uh, we have our delegate assembly, um, which are elected positions. We then have board committees, um, which are um, kind of work with the board. Uh, they work directly under the board. Um, however, our special interest groups are opportunities for social workers to connect on topic areas, on uh, like interests, um, all different things, and they are member led um, and they are supported by the chapter. Uh, so recently, some of the ones that have popped up is a private practice work group that uh, has been going on since last fall. Uh, we started a senior and retired social workers peer support group, as well as a social workers working with older adults group. Uh, these are really uh, for the purpose of connecting on, um, you know, interest areas uh, that social workers have. We've had a lot of social workers approach us in years past about we want to you know, I want to talk about this or I want to network with this group of people. So the chapter is um, asking you to join us um, in those areas or initiatives that you want to see a start and we'll support you in doing that yourself so you can become a leader in those areas. So hopefully you, this isn't the first time you're hearing about these things um, as they've, they've been starting the past couple months. Uh, the next item that I want to let you all know about is that the registration is open for the student conference Survive and Thrive on February 26th. Um, this was a conference that was entirely developed by students, um, our uh, student representatives, a few of our interns, as well as one of our colleagues who is a recent graduate. Uh, this program was uh, developed to uh, enrich uh, the programming or the, the curriculum that they already have in their schools. And this is our agenda. Um, we kind of break it down. It looks like there is, you know, an organic BSW, MSW, and doctoral, but students can choose to go to whichever one they would like. Um, and we're, we have a few sponsors at our schools. We have a lot of individual sponsors uh, that are our members, and we still have the ability to do individual sponsorship. So if you're uh, if you want to figure out a way that you can support the students in our student outreach, uh, this is a good way to do that as well. Sorry, I'm going a little fast. If anyone has questions, feel free to raise a hand or unmute yourself or throw a question in the chat box. Uh, the next area that I wanted to highlight is our revolutionized social work initiative. This initiative has been going on since last June. Um, we've held at uh, we've held one town hall every month, and we've been gaining steady momentum. Um, our last program, um, there were 
3,500 social workers who joined us live. And within one week, it's been viewed an additional 3,000 times. Um, this has been the largest network we've been able to create um, since I've been here, which has been six years. Uh, our contact lists is almost 8,000 social workers interested in this initiative. There are uh, a lot of social workers from New York State but also social workers from all around um, America and all around the world. This program is open to members and non-members. Um, and we have over 200 people who have signed up to work with the chapter uh, in the work groups for this initiative. Uh, it's really important that I uh, acknowledge our revolutionized social work leadership team. Uh, they are, from all over New York State. Primarily they are members and there's uh, I believe a one non-member on our group as well. Uh, these are the social workers that are really driving and powering this initiative. Uh, they have a lot of incredible ideas and things that are kind of working behind the scenes right now. And I'm really looking forward to sharing what they accomplish over the next year. And I hope that you guys have an opportunity to join us as well. If you don't, we do have a landing page um, where you can view all of our past town halls, which I'll put into the chat box later. Uh, next, I just wanna highlight an upcoming Veterans Mental Health Training Initiative opportunity. Uh, this is one of our panels worth one CE credit. Uh, this is veterans and military service member families. It's going to take place from two, uh, 12 to 2 on February 17th. This is free and open to anyone who would like to join us. Uh, we would love to have your support uh, for this program. It's incredibly important to listen to the lived experiences of military service members. And um, it is, again, one free CE for all. So we're approved for social work, we're approved for LMHC and LMFT. Uh, so feel free to forward any information uh, about this program out to your colleagues and they can join us for free as well. All right, so here I have a quote of NASW would be better if blank was working there. And I think we know everyone has said this or not working, leading. Uh, someone has said this one time or another. You know, there's a social worker that you know who would be great in a leadership position, or you think that they could provide perspective to the chapter that we lack. Um, right now, our leadership nominations are open. Um, they are open until February 22nd. Uh, very from the very top we have the president elect position open um many board positions including the the president elect secretary board member at large msw bsw and division directors those positions all sit on the board we also have a, a cnli representative openings which are the folks that um, review and vet the applications to be on the election, as well as the delegate assembly, uh, which is the body that makes decisions about social work speaks and NASW policies and positions. I really wanna encourage everyone on this call to nominate someone. The fact that you came here and showed that you're invested in the chapter today um, makes me think that you're also perfect people to, to give us a nomination. Even if it's just one nomination, um, we can re we'll reach out to that person, we'll set up and, and find out what um, interests they have, what goals they have, and see how we can align that with the chapter in the positions that are available. So again, I can't press enough, please take the time uh, to, yes, to nominate, or you can run for the board as well. So we'd love we'd love to see those those nominations increase a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to move on to our Capital Action Social Work Legislative Advocacy Day. This is the first um, advocacy day, particularly uh, developed for our members. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Amanda uh, to share a little bit more about this program. Hi, I'm Amanda Mulvihill. I'm the uh, policy assistant. And we're very excited to announce that we're hosting our uh, Capital Action Day, which is going to be on February 23rd. And it's going to be an all day event virtual. 
um, but in order to participate in that, and that's for members and for students as well, but in order to participate in that, we're asking everybody to um, uh, join us at our training day, which is actually next Tuesday at 5.30. It's gonna be an hour, an hour and a half, and we will record it, but in order to participate, you must watch the full video because it's gonna explain um, everything that we're gonna do. And it's also gonna provide a lot of information for the uh, Capital Action Day. Um, so our main goal is basically to teach all of our members how to advocate. That is the one thing that the biggest takeaway we want. And to do that, what we're gonna be doing is um, we're gonna be teaching our members how exactly to advocate. So how to look up their representatives, how to contact them. And we're gonna lay it all out so that all the work is done for you. So we're gonna teach you what to say, how to say it, what to look for, because a lot of um, these meetings, they can be pretty quick. You can get five minutes with the legislator or you can get 30 minutes. So you have to be prepared. So that is all taken care of. And um, I think this is gonna be a really great experience for all of our members because to advocate is to do social work. So uh, take it back. If you have any questions, please let me know, let Amelia know. We would love to have as many people as we can. Amelia, you're muted. Yes, sorry about that. Um, I've been with the chapter for almost six years and every year members have asked us you know, we want a lobby day. We want to meet with our legislators. We know social workers are so deeply passionate about this. Um, so this is an awesome opportunity uh, to, to do for almost like an inaugural uh, lobby day with our members. So we'd love for you to be able to be there for a historic moment within the chapter that we're starting uh, doing our own lobby day with our members. It's important that you're there so then you can provide feedback of what about what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and what you want to see in the future. Um, I'm now going to hand it to Sam for a moment to talk a little bit about COVID. Yes, so we just, we, we actually kind of wanted to go through things kind of quickly today to kind of, you know, open it up to you, hear what your thoughts are, but I did just want to address COVID and that I know that this is impacting, you know, our social workers and your clients. And um, you know, we've been trying to do very regular emails out to all our members to let you know, like, who's eligible, how do you find out if you're eligible for the vaccine, uh, like, where you go, and, you know, unfortunately, I think, as you all know, I don't think it'll be news to you that, you know, across the country, the rollout of, of COVID has been slow, much slower than they wanted it to be, um, and they're still working through those organization, like, organizing this widespread event, they're still working through those kinks. Um, we did find out that we'll receive 16, 16% uh, more vaccine doses uh, next week. Uh, we had been receiving 300,000 doses a week. And then the last two weeks, it's been 250,000. So I don't know if the 16% is off of the 250,000 or the 300,000. Um, but we do know that there are millions of people in New York State that are eligible and have not been able to receive the vaccine just because they're they're out. They're out of vaccine like all over the state. So we're going to keep an eye on this and update you. You know, as soon as we find out something new, we're going to get that information to you uh, so that you have it and so that you can, you know, keep checking. You can have it, you know, you can let your clients know as well, like how they can check if they're eligible for COVID. Um, so I did want to make sure I touched on that, but I would really love to open it up now to you to see what, you know, what's on your mind. You know, what did we miss? Is there anything we didn't bring up today that, that you want to talk about or anything you think we should be talking about? Oh, and uh, Suzanne, thank you for joining us. I see you, you asked a question. We will put that in the uh, chat box, but uh, certainly feel free to unmute yourself and, uh, and start talking, Suzanne. I, I hope everybody's well. I just wanted to um, ask if the, about the virtual or in person is the capital action day actually in person or virtual as well as the training 
both are virtual. So the training is next Tuesday night at 5.30, 5.30 to 7. Virtual, we're going to record it because we know sometimes people have appointments with clients or they may be in class or they may be teaching. So we will send out the recording to everyone who registers just in case you couldn't make it in person. And then we also have people who've been emailing our help desk um, and just saying, hey, I can't make the training. So we have our assistant, um, Justine, who's wonderful, is keeping a data base for us so she can make sure she gets that recording out to those people as well. Um, and then the virtual, uh, the lobby day, we'll be teaching you, not we, it's not me. I'm gonna be learning with all of you, um, but uh, Evelyn and Amanda, we have two interns as well. They're gonna be teaching you like how to set up your appointments, like by Zoom call or by phone. We've met with our, with the legislators like that. Um, we were going in person and then COVID hit last year. And then we started meeting by having like a, a phone conference with them or by Zoom. In fact, we met with a legislator um, right before the holiday break in December and it was a Zoom meeting. And it was it was pretty cool because she was at her office and her assistant was there. She had her mask on and they kept moving away from each other so they could take their mask off and talk. But yeah, like they've, they've really gotten used to the Zoom platform. and. The team will also be training us on the legislative um, agenda and like what we're advocating for and you'll be given like a position paper so you're not going in there like having to figure out like what the issue is or like talking points so it'll be really informational like for everyone and I see Lauren uh oh thank you Lauren that's very nice um she's thanking us for our, our webinar training opportunity that is our colleague Shakira Maki, who's not with us today, um, she runs our CE program and she does do a really phenomenal job with those training opportunities. And Amelia runs the, the veteran trainings and she does a phenomenal job with our veterans committee and, and with scheduling those. But yes, thank you for asking that, Suzanne. Everything is virtual. I have not, we opened our office for two weeks in August and had a COVID scare and we haven't been back so we're all working from home right now uh to just trying to stay safe what about anyone else what what would you like to talk about is anyone getting involved with their division or with any of our uh, other initiatives I see Vanessa, but I don't know if you want to talk because I know that you're a very active committee mem member. <laughs> I was just collecting my thoughts because we've been doing quite a lot, actually. Um, I sit on two committees. I'm on the Northeast Division Steering Committee and I'm on the Communications and Marketing Committee. And um, in the first one, the Northeast Division, we've been trying to focus, obviously, on um, trying to get everybody in that the northeast division is very varied because there's albany in the south and then we go all the way up to i live in plattsburgh which is 20 miles from the canadian border so it's a quite a diverse division in that respect and uh, one thing i should mention is that um, members of the northeast division are putting on a panel next week um i believe it's the 10th or the no the 11th of February, um, which I encourage people to attend. It's it's supporting rural social workers, which of course you know isn't just the Northeast Division; it's across New York State. But um, in that respect, uh, we, we've been trying to. Natalie Turner is our uh, person in charge at the moment, and she's been. I, I take my hat off to Natalie. She's been very active and has been setting up a book club and you know we really because for a long time the northeast division was kind of forgotten and neglected <laughs> especially us right up here in the the foes of north so and then in the um communications committee notion is our um who's a, a, a recently graduated msw has been working on uh, supporting students which uh, I taught for 20 years in a social work department at Plattsburgh State. So that's close to my heart because I know that uh, 
at this point in time, a lot of students are really struggling, especially with internships and so on. So, um, yep, we've been pretty active, I think. And I just want to say that I met Vanessa in person um, last fall and your friend Joe and your daughter Martha at all social workers because you drove three hours to come to a Northeast event. And I just know you all made such an impression on me and you just told me you're like, you know, you've got to make sure that you don't leave us out up here, you know, like that the, the rural we're, we live in a very rural area. You've got to pay attention to the rural social workers. And then of course I did what, what I tend to do. If you reach out to me, I made sure you were getting those Northeast division <laughs> emails, working with the division and getting plugged into committees because that your voice is really important. It's extremely important to me that our organization is run by members and that you all are pushing what we do that you push all the initiatives. So I just want to thank you for that three hour drive because- Oh, that's, well, that's pretty par for the course for people who live in Plattsburgh. <laughs> but uh, yes, well, actually we were disappointed with COVID that we couldn't come down again because uh, we had planned to. And Jo, unfortunately now, well, fortunately for her has moved to South Carolina. So she's, she's fled the frozen North. But uh, Martha and I are still here, so hopefully, no, I am very optimistic with a new administration and uh, new, new direction in terms of the country, <laughs> that this is a good time for social workers, this is an important time, this is a time when we really can make our voices heard, I think. Absolutely. And it's very important that it's your voices that are heard. Like you are, you're the organization, you are NASW New York State. And, you know, we want to make sure that, that we always say, we have a saying around the office, the, the virtual office right now, but um, that our job is to build a platform. That's what the, the staff do. We build a platform so that you all can stand on the platform and shine because it's about you. You're practicing in the field. You're training our future social workers. You have boots on the ground. You know what's going on. So we want your voices amplified. So that so I just want everyone to know, do what Vanessa did. Come talk to me, schedule a meeting, talk to me, tell me what's important, what I should, you know, what. I'm saying I, there's no I in this, what we should be doing and what we, you know, what we should be focusing on because that's what we want. We want to know what's important to you and we want to like help implement that and, and have you all speaking up. And I want to say to Samantha that it's very encouraging to me as an older person to see the younger generation come along and, and really want to take leadership in these aspects. No, I think that's really important. I love it. The um, students have their own committee now mm -hmm. and we chose to name it the Student Leadership Committee. And mm -hmm. I think they did it because the goal is to train. We're, you know, we're training leaders and we want to continue to do that. And they have a lot of energy. <laughs> right. And it's going back to the basics of social work. I mean, it's really going back to Jane Adams and the Settlement House and, you know, being a leader in the community. And I think we've undervalued ourselves for a long time. Yes, they're definitely leading in several areas. <laughs> Everything that we highlighted here today really came from a spark of a member. Um, particularly the revolutionized social work um, initiative that we're doing, which is the most successful initiative. I, again, think I've seen this chapter do with over 8,000 people that are getting involved. That came from our BSW student last year. You know, she was really unhappy um, with what she was seeing in the way that social workers respond, were responding to uh, the moment within the movement of Black Lives Matter. She didn't like what she saw from colleagues or her school or NASW, our chapter. And she told us that she wanted us to do something about it um, and asked us to start this town hall, which has blown into the, the largest um, program that we have running. Uh, and that came from you know one of our members and that came from one of our students. So it's, it's just um, 
an example how we really want to put the power in the hands of our members and make happen uh, the, the vision that they have, we wanna make that happen. So yeah. never hesitate to reach out to us. If you have an idea, we call ourselves the office of yes. <laughs> if you wanna do it, yes, we wanna support you in that. If anyone has any other questions or topics or something they wanna see in 2021, we'd love to hear it. Hi, my name is Erin Cooney. I've been a member of NASW for probably 20 years. Um, I live in Watertown. Um, and over the course of the 20 years, we have tried to do things for um, um, just getting to know each other as far as members. We are part of the Central, which is Syracuse, which is an hour away. And although we're not as rural probably as Vanessa, um, we definitely are very much separated um, from the Syracuse area. Um, so probably about 15 years ago, a colleague and myself spent so much time trying to, we hosted a get together for NASW members, sent it out for Jefferson County, St. Lawrence County. And I think we had five people show up. Um, this new central person, maybe six, seven years ago came up, there were three of us. I work at an agency, there are 10 social workers. I am the only member of NASW. And I have tried and tried like, come on, be part of it. And so I don't know who I talked to you about that, um, but it, it's very um, sad to me. I don't know how many members locally there are, um, but I just, I didn't know who I talked to about this and let them know, you know, as far as this area. I have two thoughts about this, Erin, and thank you for sharing that. Um, the first thing is, is, um, we, when I came in, I came in September, 2019 and started, uh, kind of, we started to build back, uh, different parts of the organization. So we, we started with advocacy and then we went to our continuing ed and then divisions came in like last summer. So our divisions are just now starting to kind of get up and running again. And Randy Stetson is now the, the director, the region five, um, director, we're, and we're moving from, we had it to where the board members like represented two divisions and we're going back to where it's a division director for each division and they're a board member. Um, so he's, he'll be going off the board uh, in 2021 and then there'll be a division director for your division. And then for every division actually we'll have their own division director, but we can connect you with him. But the other thing I wanna tell you is I am more than willing to um, talk to the social workers you work with. Like, you know, if they were interested in like, you know, if you if you reached out to them and said, hey, do you wanna, you know, meet with uh, staff or the executive director at NASW just to find out what they're doing and how you can get involved. I would be more than happy to do that, to, to meet with you all, because that's, I mean, that's how we get to know people, right? Is like by going into organizations that have 10 social workers and talking to those 10 social workers. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, so, oh, are you gonna send an email, Amelia? Oh, I was, I was seeing that also Sharon shared that they're um, an MSW student, they're new to NASW and nearly none of their classmates know about it, um, NASW. Um, I think that like being, you know, real with ourselves transparent is while we share that we've increased our membership there's over like 40,000 licensed social workers within our geographic area and we only have wow. 6,000 of those right so if we're going to be honest with ourselves we've got a lot of work to do um when sam came in again we're going to be honest with ourselves the chapter was not in a solid position it mm -hmm. didn't have a foundation it didn't have enough programming and supports for social workers. So we've been working really hard on trying to gain some substance because we our, our spiel or our elevator speech can't just be become a member because it's your a professional association. It's a there needs to be tangible benefits for you to join this association. We've been really working hard on trying to do that. And I think we're kind of um, just getting to that stage where we're going to more seriously look at the way that we're marketing and connecting with people. Um, 
So yeah, Sharon, I absolutely believe that, that your classmates don't know about NASW. Um, we're gonna, uh, if you if you want to un unmute and talk to us, like we can we can chit chat as well. But I'm thinking there's ways that we need to intentionally reach out to students and other social workers. Yeah, um, if and you I think that the 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 student group that's now in place is going to to really make you're going to start seeing a real impact in that. Absolutely, we so, have a so Sharon uh, needs to join that group to to bring that information to her school. Our local community college offers a BS, um, BSW and an MSW out of other um, universities that bring their program here. And so we actually have those programs. And even with that, they're not being part of the, the, the they're not taking advantage of the membership. The, yeah, it, I will come talk to anyone. <laughs> So I, I like doing that. It's my favorite part of the job is when I get to talk to members. So like, you know, I don't want to put work on you, but it, like if you, you know, if you wanted to organize it, I'm going to, I started an email. I put your name in. I'll look up your email address in our membership files. I'm going to email you and like, yeah, if you want to get together with your colleagues or students, okay. and I, I would love to come talk to them. And Sharon, yes. We have a student leadership committee um, that you can absolutely join. In fact, Evelyn uh, Lopez Rodriguez is the chair of that committee. She's our BSW student rep on the board. And we talked about this before she started the, the, the um, committee. We, you know, we just kind of talked about like strategies and what she was gonna do on the committee. And one of the things we talked about is she's like, well, how big should it be? And I was like, man, you know, it's one of those committees you don't want to say no to anyone. <laughs> like, you know, you want to let you want to let them in the committee because, and then we can figure if it gets really big, we can figure out how to make subcommittees so that the students are doing meaningful work on the committee. And um, she agreed with that. You know, she's like that. I don't want to do that. And I'll say that our committees, there's you know a few things at the uh, chapter level that are like members only. Running for the board, you have to be a member. To be on a committee, you have to be a member. Um, and then we have some member benefits, like the advocacy day. Our uh, advocacy day is going to be a member benefit that's go going to be for members. Um, we did have some of our students, we have eight student interns. Um, you know, if you were asking, I have friends, they're not members, but I know they'd love to go to this in addition to lead. You know, can they come? So we're like, okay, they can come, you know, if they want to come. But Probably in the future, we won't open it up because we just don't want to confuse people about lead versus our chapter advocacy day. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think if, what else you have to be a member. Oh, Bob, I see you have a question. Um, do you want to talk, Bob? I was wondering if there's any uh, designation for uh, people interested in sharing aspects of spiritual practice. I think that could be a special interest group. I'm not sure we would have to send out like a preliminary interest meeting. What do you think, Sam? Oh, so here's <laughs> here's the uh, here's what the chapter says, right? Like, so for our special interest groups, those are member led, member run. So for our committees, our committees report to the board. Those are formal entities of the chapter and they report to the board. And there's a staff member assigned to every committee. And as staff, we go to the committee meetings, we take meeting minutes, we send out like invites, we do all of that. For our special interest groups, there has to be a member, or, you know, there has to be a social worker who says, I want to lead this initiative or I want to partner with, you know, two or three other people and lead this initiative. And then the way we offer support is um, Justine, our assistant. She meets with that person and then she sets up, she, she does the, you know, we do the graphics, we advertise it for you, we set up the meeting room, but we don't have a staff assigned to it. So it's literally for, for members, you can go in and, and you run those. The chapter chats, those are, we can absolutely do a chapter chat on spiritual practice. And that's not as long of a commitment. That's an hour. 
uh, if, if you would want to come in and talk about spirituality and, you know, social work and how that works, that would just be a one, like a one hour commitment. Um, is that something, uh, that you, that you'd be interested in, Bob? It's a possibility. Um, I, um, looking forward to the possibility of, uh, checking out the, um, special interest groups for senior and retired social workers and um, seeing if there's people in there uh, interested uh, in uh, sharing um, questions about how to live. Good. Are you signed up for the special, the, the peer support group? Because I think that's coming up. I checked it off. I check off a lot of things. And uh, yeah, I checked that off. and. Um, and mentoring too is um, something else that I'm interested in. Oh, that's good. Cause I do know we have a couple of committees who have looked at mentoring and like how to implement that. Um, in addition to our student leadership, at the same time we started a, it, they actually call it the new committee, new and emerging workforce. So we wanted students when they graduate to have a committee that they, that they could go on to like for that next step. Um, so I think that's something that that committee has been looking at. Um, again, these are both brand new committees. Um, I did put my email in the chat. So um, I know Sharon sent me an email and I'm gonna connect you with Evelyn and then Robin, send me an email. Um, anyone can email me, not just you two. Like I, I answer my emails. So anyone feel free to, to email me with any, any questions, concerns, anything. Or like Bob, Bob likes to send me funny videos, right, Bob? All the time. <laughs> All right, well, I just wanna thank everyone for joining us. I said to Sam, I don't know why I talk so fast today, but I, I did. Um, but I think it's because I know everybody's starting the year and everyone is busy. So we wanted to get you in and out if possible. Um, feel free to, you know, shoot an email to the chapter about something that you think that we need to cover um, both in these meetings or in any of the areas that we discussed today. I just want to thank you again for joining with us. It, it really means a lot to have some face to face time with members um, every month. Uh, to hear their feedback on what we're doing and what we're not doing. Uh, so really thank you for taking the time to meet with us. Um, and it, it means a lot that you want to be a part of making this chapter better. So I, I really value your time. Thank you all. I also want to thank Amanda. I, I want to yeah. thank Amanda Mulvihill for, she jumped in, we called her two minutes before the meeting started and said, hey, could you come talk about this? And she got right on. So thank you, Amanda, for coming. And I just want to echo Amelia, thank you all for coming. We enjoy seeing you. And um, let us know, uh, you know, if we can help with anything else, shoot me an email. If you have any ideas, any feedback, we'd love to hear it. It's, it's your chapter. Thank you, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Keep well. <laughs>